ACW is sponsored by Jabadi. Self-care through skin care. Jabadi is for everybody. Welcome, welcome to ACW Podcast. Thank you for joining us today. I am Robin Gabriel Parson, your host, and our co-host today is Arturio Peel, the founder of Body Studies and a therapeutic yoga leader. And we are so excited and pleased to have Arturio here today. But for those of you who may be just joining us, I'm going to catch you up a little bit on our conversation this month. Um, and our topic, we've been discussing creating that new you in the new year, and we've been providing different resources and tools. We've introduced approaches and methods to help one grow personally. We've been sharing fitness tips. We've been tapping into motivational strategies that empower you. We've been helping you identify your purpose in life encouraging self-care and and more and which leads us uh, to our topic today therapeutic yoga so we have the master here Ontario Peel to talk about therapeutic yoga so welcome welcome Ontario thank you so much for having me Robin glad to be here now Ontario please share with our audience some of your background as a wellness uh, and yoga professional um, okay, I, I started uh, practicing uh, yoga in high school, actually. Uh, we had a high school yoga class in the, in the 70s, early 70s, I think. I can't remember the numbers that far back. <laughs> wow. And, and then I, I also started practicing body work around the same time, about 1974, 1975, mid-70s, somewhere in there. Uh, started uh, learning body work and practicing body work and um, uh, used body work as a um, as my kind of steady work as I went through music school um, and then uh, eventually decided to do body work full time in the late 80s and I went through a much more intensive program than a thousand hour training up in Washington State and um uh, almost immediately after that started teaching anatomy uh, at that massage school and um, went to acupuncture school in 1995 down in Santa Barbara, California. And um, that's about the time that I started teaching uh, anatomy for yoga teacher trainings. And um, also right around that time is when I met Sherry Clampett Borda, who was the developer of the therapeutic yoga. And she was teaching yoga to folks at um, uh, HIV centers and at uh, cancer patients, et cetera. And uh, we developed it into a training for yoga teachers, physical therapists, and others who, who wanted to add some tools to their uh, tool belt. We feel so special to have you here today because you've had over 30 years of inspiring and educating yoga teachers. I mean, from body workers, movement specialists across the globe. So you've really been doing some amazing stuff when it comes to anatomy and introducing people through, through kinesiology and therapeutic touch. That's what I want to talk about today. I really want to talk more about the therapeutic yoga. Because again, there's many different types of yoga. And even for me, I taught yoga, um, but being introduced to therapeutic yoga, I knew it was a different technique. So we're going to really tap into that today. So what is therapeutic yoga? Therapeutic yoga, as we teach it in the therapeutic yoga teacher training, it's a a blend of uh, restorative yoga, gentle yoga, um, breath work, uh, guided meditation, and energy healing or hands-on healing. Um, it's combined to make a gentle yet effective practice for folks who are recovering from injury or illness, or folks who can't go to a regular yoga class, uh, or just for those of us who are a little stressed out, which right about now is pretty close to everybody. It, it's, uh, <laughs> right. we developed it as a, um, it was right around that time where there was a, uh, I think it was a Time Magazine cover where it said yoga heals. And there were a lot of teachers coming to Sherry in particular and saying, 
I need more tools. What are you, what are you doing with cancer patients? What are you do, doing with HIV AIDS patients? And so that's when we started developing the training in, uh, in the mid nineties. As I mentioned, I've taught yoga many different styles. I figure yoga is naturally therapeutic. You know, you help people to naturally experience their innate power of the mind, body, and, you know, connection, the whole narrative behind it. So what makes this so much more different than just a mind, body type experience? Yeah, I, I agree. Absolutely. Yoga can be very therapeutic. It, can, it is very therapeutic, but it's not for every body like a typical vinyasa class, for example. Um, that is a great practice if you're healthy enough to do the movements. Um, but what we're aiming to do is to give uh, teachers and to give our students more options. You know, I, I've had a lot of students come into class um, a week out of a surgery I've had people come to me a few days out of a surgery and they still want to do yoga, but um, sometimes the stronger practices can actually be harmful for people who are working, who are living with a condition or uh, recovering from an injury or surgery. So we're just broadening the movement palette, uh, taking it down a bit, you know, um, and working a lot on opening the fascia, the connective tissue, and also to help with the formation with uh, a strong and mobile scar tissue uh, as a part of that uh, recovering from injury or surgery. That's, that's pretty deep, Ontario, and I appreciate you sharing that because I use myself as an example because I love yoga, and I noticed as I practice, and as we age, our body changes, so my flexibility is not as deep as it used to be, feeling a little arthritis in my hips, so it's like, how do I adjust? How do I make it more palatable for me and more comfortable? So I do appreciate you sharing that, you know, all yoga is not for everybody. And, and I, I have witnessed that you can do more harm to yourself than good. Being a yoga instructor, it's the mind uh, benefits that I really appreciate from it, along with the, the poses. Um, I, I really do appreciate that. So thank you for that. But in reference to targeting people that are dealing with, let's say, mental or physical trauma, how do you guys approach that in your class? Like, what does it look like if I walk in and I may have uh, some issues dealing with my hip? What would you do to adjust me so I can get into those tissues without injuring myself? Mm. Yeah, so the first thing we do is to, um, we'll, we'll often do a little bit of uh, intake to get an idea of what, what's going on with your hip, for example. What, is this uh, an accumulation over time? Did, have you had a hip replacement? Um, do you have, have you had a surgery where the scar tissue may be restricting movement? All of those things can change the movement profile of what's gonna be healthy for you or what could possibly be detrimental. For example, hip replacements, they're, depending on where, what direction the hip replacement was done from, whether it was done from the back or the front, there can be um, quite a difference in limitations on what movements are safe. So um, having an understanding of that helps us approach each individual person and then helps, to, helps us create a practice that fits their body. And it can be a group class. It can be in a group class situation. Um, in the group classes, oh, remember the days of group classes? In, in the group classes, right? <laughs> one of the uh, important things is to really tune people in to their sensations and to doing the practice from the inside because in, in a lot of yoga classes typically people are trying to do what the teacher is doing and if the teacher is putting their foot behind their head they're going to try to put their foot behind their head <laughs> right even, 
even if their hips aren't shaped for that, you know, there's a lot of variety in our structure from the skeleton on out. There's differences in angles and depths where that may not be possible or even desirable. So in therapeutic yoga, we like to turn folks towards uh, their sensation and being aware of when their body is speaking to them. Because uh, usually our bodies will let us know, you know, the body speaks through sensation. And if we just take the time to listen, we can uh, get a lot of healing out of that. And that's true, whether it's a physical injury or it's a somato emotional trauma, uh, listening to the inside can really help to guide the, um, guide the practice, guide the person in their own practice or help guide the teacher in creating a practice for that particular student. Now, Ontario, a lot of people still have this idea that yoga is something religious or it's not something for them. What are your thoughts on yoga being an alternative healing practice? Because I know I use it and I find that, and again, dealing with a little arthritis, once I go through poses and warm my body up and get my blood circulating, I walk out through class like a butterfly. It's like I literally healed whatever those restrictions were. So what is your thoughts on yoga being an alternative healing to, you know, our typical mainstream medicine type of healing? Well, there's a couple elements in there. Uh, the first thing you mentioned was about the spiritual part. And I think that really depends on the individual teacher and the individual student, and also what community you're teaching in. Um, you know, 20 years ago, um, there was a, a lot of uh, resistance to yoga in the medical settings, for example, in the hospitals, uh, because of things like chanting. Um, that was uh, kind of looked down on in some of the early, early attempts to get yoga into those kinds of settings. So um, some teachers would shift it up, you know, they would make it, um, instead of even calling it yoga, they might call it stress reduction. They're doing the same practices. They're not chanting in Sanskrit though. <clears throat> And they're uh, using Western language to talk about the benefits and effects of yoga. Um, and that, you know, there's still some areas where there's a lot of religious resistance to yoga, where it's looked at as a devil practice or a de devil worship. And those of us who practice yoga know that's not the case. It's right. just a way of feeling into this amazing temple of our body and to take care of this temple of our body as we move through life. And um, in going into working with other healthcare providers, I, I really like the word uh, complementary uh, medicine or integrative medicine. I'm an acupuncturist and, uh, and a yoga teacher and I work uh, side by side, doing referrals back and forth with doctors and physical therapists. And um, I'm not trying to, you know, I, I'm not trying to take any clients away from them. I, lim I realize the limitations of my teaching and my practices. And I work with doctors who realize the limitations of their practices. And we can fill each, we can fill the gaps in each other's practices. And that's the kind of uh, relationship I like to feel and, and utilize with uh, complementary care practitioners. For example, uh, uh, when I, I, I took my mom to a cardiologist um, years ago, <clears throat> And he was a wonderful MD. He spent the first session, he listened to her for 20 minutes, which was amazing. He just listened for 20 minutes. And he had been referred by her herbalist, who was one of my mentors in acupuncture school. And um, 
He said, I'm going to adjust your medication and you need to talk to uh, Dr. Han and tell him to avoid these three herbs. This Western cardiologist knew about herbal interactions with his, you know, Chinese medical interactions with, uh, uh, with the drugs that he was prescribing. And I thought that was a beautiful example of how the medicines can support each other and complement each other. That is so correct. And right now, I'm seeing a lot in the industry where now it is cross complementing uh, each other. You do have more people in the medical fear opening up to a more holistic type of healing. So that is really appreciative. And just to share a little bit, add to what you were saying, I worked with a government agency with over 500 employees and we introduced yoga to those employees. Now there was some restrictions, but what they found was that it really helped the employees focus. It was like a luncheon type of session. You come during lunchtime, do a 15, 20 minute stretch, go back to your desk. And they were seeing such a large different change in the employees in reference to production. So that is something uh, um, that we are noticing that you are having industries now opening up more to the holistic part of yoga. So I thank you and appreciate you for that. Now, this is a question because one of my colleagues mentioned about going to a chiropractor and having these adjustments. And then she made a comparison when she went to a yoga class and like, you know, and she said to me, when I left that yoga class, I felt more aligned than going to the chiropractor. So what is your thoughts on there comparing the, the two? Is it, is it somewhat the same or doing the same thing for the body? Uh, different, different approaches, all uh, hoping for the same kind of results. We're all putting, you know, basically yoga is putting a type, a good type of stress on the body and hopefully stressing the body enough that it will respond with beneficial uh, results. Same thing with chiropractor. They're putting a, a, a really focused pressure or stress on the body and hopefully getting uh, beneficial results. I, I, I think they're kind of apples and oranges. You know, I, I definitely have seen chiropractors over the years and even my, uh, like the way my yoga practice has changed, my chiropractic needs ha have changed. When I was young, I would go see a really strong crackalacka uh, chiropractor and now <laughs> I'm in my 60s now and I don't want to get my neck cracked right so I go see chiropractors that do really gentle adjustments that where I still feel the benefit but I'm not getting that that really quick crack just uh you know my body has changed I I, I don't know if I'm more sensitive or or yeah I'll just go with that instead of it being age. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So I, I think they can really complement each other again. And, and again, not any, there's no one thing that's for everybody, right? Some people do not respond well to, to chiropractic. Some people respond fantastically to chiropractic. Some people don't respond well to yoga. It's just not their jam. And, um, to, I think for clients, for patients, for people who are looking for help in their body mind situation, uh, having the spirit of um, exploration and in that exploration, really listening to how their body is responsive, responding. I, uh, for example, I tried chiropractic and it put my neck out okay, you might not want to try that type of chiropractic again. Or um, like I used to have really, my ribs used to always go out along my spine. I would get a rib twist. And mm -hmm. the thing that healed it wasn't chiropractic. It wasn't massage. It was starting to practice Aikido, uh, a Japanese martial art that I've been doing for about 30 years. And okay, that, awesome. the movement of that, I haven't had a rib out in 25 years. Wow. Something in the movement of that, I think it's the real three-dimensional 
spirally movement that's in the that's in Aikido that really helped my body. That's not to say it's going to be um, beneficial for everybody who has ribs that go out, but for me, it worked really great. So we got to do another show on Aikido, <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you for that. So. Um, Thank you so much, Ontario, for sharing all of your amazing information with us. Audience, I hope you received some really good information that you might not ever experience before. Um, keep in mind, this is conversations around creating that new you. And we want to give you as many resources as possible. Uh, I chose yoga because yoga is such a mind, body, spirit experience and therapeutic yoga allows even people who are afraid who would ever step into a class to do it without restrictions so i really appreciate you coming and sharing if our audience would like to get in touch with you how can they connect with you um sure uh they can reach me through my website at bodystudies.com um i'm also on facebook as the anatomy whisperer um and uh, yeah, please reach out. My uh, more detailed information in terms of my uh, uh, email is on the website. It's very easy to reach me. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm always glad to talk to people about what's going on in their with their uh, body minds and how things are how things are moving or not moving. I think um, for me, one of my axioms in terms of bodies and health. The, the the main guideline I like to live by and practice by is motion is lotion. And we really got to keep moving, especially in this time of doing all this sitting in front of the computer. And, the, you know, this was even before COVID, the computer, the laptops, um, they really have had a detrimental effect on, on people's on people's health. So keep it moving keep moving. doesn't have to be yoga. It doesn't have to be, you know, it can be anything, but really just keep moving. Thank you. Well, you audience, you heard that motion is lotion. I love it. So until next time, everyone live life with purpose, intention, and love. And thank you, Ontario. Thank you so much for having me. ACW is presented by Partnerships in Fitness a fitness and health and wellness consulting group, building strong minds and bodies, and empowering one community at a time. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to our Piff Nola YouTube channel and leave questions or comments. ACW is sponsored by Jabati. Self-care through skincare. Jabati is for everybody.